A Houston area attorney was shot and killed outside of a McDonald's in the city's west side over the weekend, this past weekend, folks, a couple days ago, after trying to calm down an angry customer who was upset with his order. Patrol officers with the Houston Police Department responded to the shooting about 6 p.m. on Saturday, dinner time on Saturday. According to detectives, a customer was angry with employees over his order and demanded a refund. We've all seen what this looks like, right? If not in person, then certainly on YouTube videos. Some person acting like a lunatic at the counter, screaming at the people behind the counter, the employees, yelling, maybe throwing stuff around, acting like a big old a-hole. The victim here, 46-year-old Jeffrey Limmer, a lawyer, happens to be, tried to calm down the customer. Now, do you think Jeffrey Limmer is thinking that I'm coming to the defense of others? I'm engaging in a confrontation in defense of another person? No, he's probably not thinking that. Would it have been prudent to be thinking that? Because what is he doing? He is, in fact, intervening in someone else's fight, someone else's confrontation, with no ability to foresee or control how that could spin up. 46-year-old Limmer tried to calm down the customer, and the customer then focused his attention on Limmer. Now you are the target of that other person's anger. Unreasonable anger, perhaps. Maybe really anger about a lot of other things other than a hamburger or McDonald's. Maybe they're really, maybe the hamburger is just a trigger. Maybe they're angry because their wife just divorced them. They lost custody of their kid. They got fired. They just heard that they, uh, they've been found to have violated parole and they have to serve the rest of their sentence. Who knows? But it might well not be about the burger. And they might be the kind of person who likes to have a target for their rage, rather than just have it boiling within them. Those people exist, folks. I know people who will fight a telephone pole. The fight went outside. So now it's escalated from the verbal to the physical, and Limmer pushed the customer to the ground. So maybe there's a shoving match, and Limmer got the better of the customer. The customer then went to his car, to pull out a gun and shot Limmer before the customer fled the scene in a 2000s blue Ford pickup truck. Limmer would die from that gunshot wound. And it seems like he was a nice guy. He loved fiercely his family and friends. An acquaintance told the news, always laughing, making jokes, and just loving life. According to his sister, Limmer lived near the McDonald's and went there frequently. Just an ordinary day for Attorney Limmer. He was an associate at the Houston area law firm, spent his career trying to help others. So it didn't come as a surprise when the detective said that's what he was doing in his final moments. Final, final moments. Knowing Jeff, he's the one who always says, calm down, it's not that big a deal. And divert the situation. He always wanted to fight for the little guy and do the right thing. As police search for the shooter and Limmer's family awaits justice, can there ever be justice here? Justice would be Limmer being alive. His sister, Limmer's sister, said they are proud. He stood up for what he believed was right. Okay, what are you going to do? You can't bring people back to life, but I'm sure they'd rather he was alive. A good Samaritan who was trying to do the right thing and not letting those employees at McDonald's go through that. And that's nice. A lot of people feel that way. I'm sure Limmer felt that way. Uh, within the self-defense community, there's a particular contingent um, that is often referred to as a sheepdog community who feel they have a, a moral obligation because they have the, the ability and the means to effectively deploy defensive force, not just in defense of themselves, but they feel they have a moral obligation to do that on behalf of innocence generally, other people. And 
there's certainly nothing morally wrong with that. And according to the black letter of the law, there's nothing legally wrong with that. But inserting yourself into other people's confrontations comes with these threats that I just talked about, these risks, the greater than zero risk of death and the greater than zero risk of being put in the cage for the rest of your life. And I don't tell people not to intervene in other people's fights. That's up to you. I just want you to be making an informed decision about that. And I want you to be making that decision largely today, not in the crisis of the moment. You think it ever occurred to this poor attorney lemmer that, hey, you know, if I, if I put myself on this dude's radar screen by intervening in this confrontation with the McDonald's employees, I could be dead in a few minutes, shot dead in the parking lot. No, it never occurred to him, I would expect. It ought to occur to you. It ought to occur to you. Because that is one of the possible outcomes. That was Santee, the firefighter's outcome. That was Limmer, the attorney's outcome. It could have been Daniel Penny's outcome. If that person he put a chokehold on, if he'd had a, a, a bladed weapon, BJJ gets a lot more complicated. Chokeholds get a lot more complicated. If the dude you're choking has a knife. So... I urge you to think about these things today. Now, when we, we, and, and part of the way we try to help our community do that is by sharing these real world examples with them. And they can ask themselves, all right, if I were in that circumstance, what would I do? If I were in limmer circumstance, would I intervene in that verbal confrontation with the employees at the moment limmer did? Now that doesn't mean don't intervene at all. Maybe, maybe you're, maybe you feel you have the luxury of patience. No one's getting beaten. You can afford to wait. Maybe things will just simmer down and resolve of their own accord. And you never have to be on anybody's radar screen. And you can do that. And then if the aggressor here in the McDonald's decides to go hands-on against the employees, maybe you do intervene at that point to prevent physical, violent harm to other innocent people. But have you thought about how you intend to intervene? And have you prepared yourself to intervene? And do you have the means to intervene in a legally sound way. Do you have the barehanded skills that would make it likely that you could successfully intervene without suffering the most severe consequences, maybe without having to inflict the most severe consequences on others? Can you, do you know how to restrain someone? Because it's awfully hard if you haven't trained for it, if you don't know something like BJJ, to restrain a person who doesn't want to be restrained. I'm sure we've all seen many videos of multiple cops trying to put cuffs on one suspect and having enormous difficulty doing it. Do you have a non-deadly means other than your hands of applying force to another person in a lawful way? Do you have, a, do you have pepper spray, for example? Do you know how to use it? Have you been trained? Because there are right and wrong ways to use pepper spray. Maybe you carry a gun. So you have that as an option. But a gun is very rarely the correct answer to the problem you're facing in a use of force confrontation. The large majority of confrontations are non-deadly force confrontations against which the gun would not be an appropriate response. Now, having said that, when a gun is the appropriate response, it's generally the only appropriate response. But it's generally not the right answer. 